Okay, so what's the measurements like? Show me more to the left of that. Do we have at least 10 clear feet? Oh yeah. Yeah, so there's lots in there. Like there's probably what, 15 feet before that? Yeah, so from this beam, like I'll hook on to it, obviously. 17 feet. So maybe what we do with that thing is we build it out and use it as a shelf for the countertop displays. You know what I mean? Like build it out wide enough that we could actually set a railing display on there. And just like... Yeah, because this wall, like that's 12, right? Yeah. You're thinking come off flush with that and just build it 12 inches deep. Yeah. Yeah, might as well. So, and then how high? So it's 38 inches high. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just funny watching your face while you're measuring that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... So build it up, like maybe build it a bit higher then. Build it 45 or 48 inches or something so we can put a railing in front of it okay. at 42 inches and then put a railing up on top behind that. We have that option then, right? Okay. So I was thinking we wanted to be able to open that up. Like that we wanted to have access to this thing. Yeah, I think we probably have to. Yeah. Oh yeah, plate cancellation. Make sure you change the plates on your truck today to that one that I gave you yesterday. I don't know that you get. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. The one that's on your truck as of yesterday is now canceled. It doesn't work anymore. Okay, good to know, so I'm about to hit the highway, I should do that right now then. Uh, yeah, so, like this is before, this still has a toy grid there, but that's the idea, this is a little like catwalk piece of decking, it's gonna be like four and a half feet, that'll go to that, or whatever, wherever that beam is, so. So there's lots of room there, okay. for real. Sorry, and, okay, and so, should I do a bench there? Like if you, whatever idea you have in your mind, if you think it's like something that people look at and be like, ah, oh, that's cool, can we do a bench in our place? Like, if it's that, then sure. Like you're thinking out of decking, like as if it was a deck bench? Correct, yeah. yeah. Like, sure. I was just thinking of like the best way to hide that without making it look like we're hiding anything, that's all. Right. The only thing is it's gonna, a bench sticking out there is probably gonna prevent somebody from walking down that catwalk from the main deck area because the bench will be sticking out, but I don't know that that matters that much. Right. Okay, well, so draw, like draw a bench in there off of that column and then let me know what you like to look at that. And if you don't, then I'll cover it with drywall right now. But if we're not gonna drywall it and turn it into a shelf, then so you're just, just you're just gonna have to you're just gonna have to make that call because I'm literally leaving for like if I have to change the license plate I have to do that right now and then I'm leaving for Moose Shock to go speak at Sias so that's from now and then I won't be back for three hours so oh, if you're standing okay. there wondering what you should do right now you should just make the call okay then my call is to leave it and build a bench out of decking and try and sell benches out of decking okay that's my call. I mean, what you're doing, what you're doing with that thing right now probably doesn't change regardless. You're still going to box it and drywall it in right now, and then we can. Nope. If we're going to do it out of decking, I would just bring that out of two by fours and then fasten decking onto it. Gotcha. Onto the two by fours. I wouldn't box it in. Okay. I'll box in the column. But not the. Wait, you broke up a little bit there. But yeah, do whatever. Your call.
To Basically. Yeah. So I've just recently listened to that over the last couple of months and it's like it's incredible. It's incredibly simple, the 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 ideas behind it, it's just hard to execute it, but it's just like it makes so much more sense. So this company I was interviewing last night on the podcast has implemented that almost like full force for the last seven or eight years. The company's like twenty, I think it's like twenty two years old and went for fifteen years just like like every flying by the seat of their pants yes, exactly like never knowing when the next job's coming in having no cash flow yeah like turnover like crazy with employees just like just a just organized chaos like or how do you survive chaos. that way right yeah you don't so he's like he hung in there for 15 years and then decided like this is this is crazy um went out got a business coach who kind of aligned him with this whole he called it like an EOS entrepreneur system but franchise model type business coach that helped implement all the systems and processes and everything in place and uh, so now for the last seven or eight years they've grown to be like like the biggest deck builder in their market by far they run like six crews their turnover is next to zero unless they intend to let somebody go mm. or if somebody's moving out of state or something like they literally get nobody that leaves that's because they're unhappy or right. not appreciated and so the podcast this year was super like beneficial from a learning perspective on the business side of the business, especially as we're going through trying to implement that same kind of system right now. But, uh, yeah, pretty cool. If you look at their Instagram account, Cascade Fence and Deck, they have, like, for every, you know, couple project posts about what they do, they've got pictures of their team, like, doing team building kind of type stuff or mm. events together. Like, they're big That's on, really good. They're big on culture, which is weird for a deck builder which is typically a very like siloed lonely place you just kind of do your work and you go home but they've actually built like a like a legitimately large well-run organized business and everything they do is systematized so they like right down from there like how to build a deck when they bring somebody on they've got a, man, a deck manual now that basically 35 pages of exactly how to do every step of the deck the whole way through and they've got that for their sales process and for everything like yeah it's pretty old yeah moose jaw moose jaw thousand square feet small little yard to store lumber in that was the size of most of your backyards um not not if you're in the dorms i guess but like most moose jaw sized backyards um, first year, didn't really know what we, to expect, what we were going to do. Had forecasted some number that we thought, hey, it'd be really cool if we hit this many dollars in sales and um, exceeded that by about 20%. Next year, doubled our sales. Next year, moved to a new location. Um, kept growing year over year, about 30% the last couple of years at the new location. Have outgrown it and we're in the middle now of moving to another location in Regina, which just has a bigger yard again. So now we've gone from a 3,000 square foot backyard to a 1.3 acre um, yard and 6,500 square foot building. So now we've kind of like, kind of gotten to where we wanted to be four years ago. It just took four and a half years to get there. We're also opening a location in Saskatoon at the same time. So um, time is a little bit short right now. It's a little bit ridiculous. But anyways, along the way, I'm... I'm uh, the right market. They 
Thank you. Yeah. Just get out of here lost. All right. Um, <laughs> end of the hall. Take a left. That'll take you down the stairs, and that's the side door right at. I'll go my side stairs there. Right. Okay. Thanks, Thanks man. Appreciate it. Yeah, it was nice to meet you, Royce. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> take care. That's it. Uh, I made it. Is it? It's still two bars. <laughs> I don't know. It was at one bar when we were in the car, so. 48 minutes, 39. Does it feel like whenever you go and uh, do a talk that uh, more people are trying to give you suggestions about how to do things than, are, than they are asking questions? No, that was, that was the one suggestion that was, that was new. I don't know that anybody's ever, but most of the talks I've done before have been high school, so they're a little bit less likely to like, feel comfortable even asking a question, let alone right. suggesting you do something a certain way. <laughs> yeah. You know what you should do is change, change your whole business model. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, they're just coming at it from a different perspective. It may be mm -hmm. something I didn't think of before. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's like they're a different age, they're a different point in their life, different community. Yeah. Could be value in it. Yeah, for sure. So, how'd the talk go? You liked it? Oh, well. Yeah, it was great. I thought that that was probably one of the most engaged audiences that I've had as far as speaking to schools go, but it's also the boldest. That's probably plays into it a bit. I haven't spoken at a post-secondary. Uh, I did once at the U of R for like a round table thing, I guess, but um, these guys had tons of questions, which was awesome. I love the Q&A stuff. Like, you always get asked to speak and, and they always ask, like, if you could leave some time for Q&A and my lab tutor is like, yeah, make the whole thing Q&A. Right, exactly. I get that I have to lay the context of who I am and what I do to for somebody to even have questions, so that's fine. But as far as I'm concerned, if that's a 50-minute class, if we spent 45 of it just doing Q&A, then that's, that'd be fine by me. Yeah. But yeah, it was good. They were super kind of engaged. There was questions that came from a lot of different people in there. I don't know how many people were in that class. 15? There's 15. -ish, maybe? Yeah, I would say. And so there's probably seven or eight of them that were asking quite a bit of questions, so... A, a few kids that were obviously the question askers. Yeah. Right? But still, I think you got, yeah, seven or eight questions from seven or eight different people. Yeah, I kind of made myself some notes of some things to talk about that I figured would probably take me a good chunk of the class anyway and would leave me some time for Q&A, but there was so much Q&A, like, within the conversation, because I just kind of left it open for people to jump in, whatever, that we ended up running out of time. I never really got to page two of what I was going to talk about, so <laughs> and that was fine, because we had really good conversation about the stuff I did get to, mm -hmm. questions that came out of it. So, yeah, so that was good. What was that class exactly? I never really caught that. It's, uh, I believe the class is called Strategic Marketing or Strategic Market Planning or something to that effect. Um, the lecturer had called it a capstone course, which I am not an academic, so I don't know exactly <laughs> what that means. But to me, it sounded like it was kind of like, like the final course that kind of goes over everything, kind of caps it off. Maybe that's where the name comes from. Right. All the concepts of marketing. So uh, that's why he was kind of like, there's no real agenda here. They're going to be familiar with most of the concepts you're talking about. So just touch on how your organization approaches pricing and product and typical four P's of marketing kind of stuff. So Right. And uh, yeah, so I was able to make myself some quick notes at 11.30 last night. <laughs> in 20 minutes <laughs> and then ripped it off you made a 50 minute presentation oh, out of 20 minutes God. worth of notes yeah and then I made my health stuff go home at midnight last night because I wanted to get at least a couple hours of sleep before I talk in front of people or else I eat my words and <laughs> but yeah I enjoy that kind of stuff when are we doing O'Neill? O'Neill is next week? next week Tuesday? Uh, I think so I check but here. so it'll be a little bit different because the High school uh, students gen generally don't really know what their path is yet as much as these guys would have being a little bit older. Because it sounds like they must be in like year two or yeah, 
So that's Polytech probably only has two year programs or do they have, you know, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're only two. So they're getting programs. ready to like they're getting ready to go to the workforce so they've put some thought into that. Whereas high school students are just still kind of figuring it out. So this class even gave a little bit of feedback. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a couple of guys who are like, we thought about doing this. So it's good that they kind of get into that. They have enough concept knowledge now that they can kind of do some of the critical thinking type stuff too, I guess. Mm -hmm. Which you won't get at the high schools, but yeah, it's always fun to get out and tell our story. So at the high school, it'll be a business class as well, but... The high school chats are always an entrepreneurship class. So oh, okay. It's less, less specific to marketing, but um, marketing is 100% the funnest part of business. <laughs> Accountants are boring. <laughs> Finance guys are boring. <laughs> but uh, HR, they're boring too. Um, <laughs> HR's boring too. But... Uh, yeah, entrepreneurship is fun because I, like, I'm, I'm personally passionate about entrepreneurship. I, I've always wanted to be one, and I am one now, and so I like the idea of people exploring that. I think it's a fulfilling path. Mm -hmm. Maybe not financial all the time, but it's like it's fulfilling, it's exciting, and you're in control of your own destiny. And I, to me, for my personality, anyways, I think why wouldn't you want that? Right. Why wouldn't you want to control your own life? Right. So, 